Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. And this is the second in our series of interviews with Greg Pallast, who's written a new book called Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps. And Greg now joins us in our studio in Baltimore. Thanks for joining us again, Greg. Glad to be back. And again, just to remind everybody, Greg writes for the Rolling Stone. He's a journalist for BBC Television's Newsnight, and he writes for The Guardian and The Nation and Harper's. And, and let's talk about the new book. So we're, we're doing this series of interviews about right. the book, and today we're going to talk about the Koch brothers. The Koch brothers, right. The sub-subtitle of the book is Greg Pallast Investigates the Koch Gang, Carl Rove, and Their Buck Buddies. And uh, I was an investigator before I was an investigative reporter. And one of the investigations I did was um, oil missing. Investigator for who? I was investigated for the federal government, and uh, also I worked with uh, native tribes. And there was oil missing from the Osage Indian Reservation. It was being siphoned off by uh, Coke Oil Company drivers. And we thought some drivers, renegade drivers, were out there sucking up some oil out of, the, out of these old stripper wells. You know the horses that go up and down. The way that they did is they had the right to be there, but they were, had to pay for it. So they took 80 barrels and then they'd write down 60, and they'd take 70 barrels, and they'd write down 50. You know, it was just a skim. So I thought, well, we'll grab a couple guys. Fall the trucks back on a loading dock in Oklahoma, who's standing there saying, I want more, was Charles Koch. Charles Koch personally ordered the pilfering of oil. Now, my now you, first You've written was, this. Yes, I've written this. He has not sued you about this. No, and he he's, has more mean lawyers than... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the mob, you know, plenty of consigliere. So, Mr. There. Mr. Koch, you're very welcome to come on The Real News at any time to refute all of this. Yes. Go ahead. I'd love to talk to him about it. But the most interesting thing was, was my question, why? He was already a multi-billionaire at the time. And so the amount of oil being stolen, you have to understand, is a few hundred bucks from a family from each of these native families. And that gets some royalties. Well, I said why, but his, uh, one of his uh, executives asked the same question, why? And we know his answer because his executives were wired. And on the tape, he said, I want my fair share, and that's all of it. So this is the Koch brothers. And by the way, you're wondering, since the FBI had the tapes, the videotapes, the, the witnesses, the, the oil, the whole thing, what happened? Well, if you look in Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, we have a chapter called Target 67C. And Target 67C is the name of the guy named Charles Koch who is being indicted with Koch Industries for theft from an Indian reservation, racketeering, um, theft from federal properties. These are big felony crimes. So what happened? The answer is the money, as it turns out, and I have FBI agents who've been screaming about this, Justice Department people. Um, prosecutors serve at the discretion, at the pleasure of the state's senators. Well, Don Nichols, who was the, the Republican uh, US senator, was not pleasured by the prosecutors cuffing one of his big uh, donors and benefactors, the, the Koch brothers. So the prosecutor was removed. The grand jury that uh, was impaneled, was not allowed to even look at the evidence, and one of Koch's buddies who became prosecutor wrote him a letter saying, you will not be prosecuted, which is pretty funny. <laughs> like, that he was told that. So that's just the beginning, and all throughout the book we have several chapters. Well, jump from that to Koch's role in the elections. So now what happens is that's not good enough. Remember, he had to have a senator. So now he was then hit with 300, the Koch brothers and Koch Industries were hit with 300 50 criminal violations of uh, violations of the federal environmental laws, uh, the, the Coke Industries. These are criminal violations, 350 of them. They took those oil trucks that we had followed, and after they skimmed the oil and got rid of the good stuff, uh, they skimmed from the Indians and they sold the oil, there's still sludge at the bottom of these trucks, so they just opened the spigots and dumped them at the rivers. So Nice guys. Uh, well, that's a crime. So uh, now what do you do? As one of the things I say in Billionaires and Ballot Band, it's rule number one for billionaires, they, the way to avoid breaking the law is to change the law, not change your criminality, right? So they decide to get rid of the Environmental Protection Agency and environmental laws and federal prosecution. So they, they drafted something called Contract for America. If you remember, Newt Gingrich rode to power on this. And, and one group of investigative reporters said, this sounds like 
it was written just for the Koch brothers, the contract for America. No, that's, but I checked it out, it's not true. It was written by the Koch brothers. I didn't they, know that. They, uh, they, that's how they funded, they, that's when they funded the creation of the Heritage Institute. And uh, they created uh, something called uh, Citizens for a Sound Economy. And then something else happened. There's another chapter called The Hunt for Triad. It turns out that suddenly the reason why Newt Gingrich won, which shocked everyone, including Bill Clinton, was that 25 Democrats lost their seats because there was a group called Campaign for Our Children's Future, sounds very nice, who suddenly spent millions of dollars. They spent millions of dollars fighting, um, uh, running ads, smear ads against Democrats. Now this is a time when we didn't see big money in campaigns. So they ran all these smear ads the last week of the campaign, like, um, you know, they, they said, oh, one. What, what year are we in? This, this was the, um, we're talking the um, 94 midterm elections. And then again, it continued in 96. And so how did the Republicans take these seats of these massive millions of dollars in money smearing these Democrats? And now, it was traced back again by FBI and congressional investigators. This, who are these? Who was concerned about the children's future? It had nothing to do with children. It went back to a company called Triad, which is the name of Chinese money laundering games. Behind Triad was Coke Industries. Now here's the kicker, okay? At that time, it was a crime for corporations to give money to elections campaigns. So this is another federal crime committed by the Cokes. So that's how we have today, now we zip the tape forward to Citizens United decision in 2010 by the US Supreme Court. They, through their massive donations, they were able to, and uh, games they were able to get the court that they wanted. At that point, there was this little group called Citizens United, which somehow hired the most expensive lawyer in the United States, Ted Olson, to argue their case at the Supreme Court. But no one asked, how could how they get Ted Olson? He didn't volunteer. He was um, given leave from his day job as general counsel for Coke Industries. So Coke Industries, this was the way that Coke which freeze, Industries- Which frees the Coke brothers in this election to spend whatever right. they want. Right, and not only that, but very important, it decriminalized their prior behavior. The Cokes were always giving money through Coke Industries, but it was criminal. They just decriminalized it. So it's, it's not just what they could do now, but that they got away with their basically any attempt at bringing them to justice before. And I want to give credit to a Republican senator, Fred Thompson. Remember, you know, remember uh, Mr. Law and Order, the, uh, the guy who plays a federal prosecutor on Law and Order, as you'll see in Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. Fred Thompson wanted to blow the whistle on the Koch brothers, even though he was a Republican, because I guess he took the, playing the part of a prosecutor kind of seriously, right? <laughs> and um, he was told by Trent Lott, then the senator, the Republican majority leader in the Senate, back off, and his investigation was shut down. And why didn't the Democrats, who knew all about it, scream bloody murder? Yeah, why? One did, Dennis DeConcini, but they got him. They, he told me the Koch brothers got him. That's when the Keating Five, uh, he was smeared. Um, but, and he said the Koch brothers were behind him losing his seat, because he wanted to bring up this issue. But Fred Thompson, Republican, shut it down, and the Democrats didn't complain because it was a trade, it was a deal. As you'll read, and true blue Democrats might be upset to hear this, but Bill Clinton apparently had taken not a small amount of change from his billionaires called the Riotti family. They're not American citizens. He met 95 times with them in the White House. That means he met with Chinese billionaires more often than his own daughter, Chelsea. And um, he, apparently money went into the Clinton campaign and other favors were done by the Riottis, big favors uh, for the Clintons. That, that's a real impeachable offense. Forget the, the uh, stains on dresses stuff. This was really impeachable. And Trent Lott told Senate, you know, Senator Thompson, we don't do the Riottis and Clinton. And they don't do the Cokes. So it was a billionaire trade. And that's how the game's played. Okay, more of this is all in billionaires and ballot bandits. And uh, if you want to get more detail on this and much more like it, it's in the book. Uh, just one other 
point, if uh, Mr. Koch or Mr. Clinton, you would like to join us to refute any of this, you're more than welcome. One more time, no one sued you yet? No one sued me yet. <laughs> and, and these guys are not afraid to sue anyone. They threaten all the time. All right. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.